There's so much richness and detail to these characters. It's very cool to, to see and hold some of these props as we develop them in our hands. Wardrobe with the props, are all of that helps you dive into the character life. As an actor, it just gives an extra level of authenticity. Because we're dealing with the coolest, edgiest people around, each one of them has their signature look and props that they use. These characters are so iconic, and people have lived with them for so many years. All of these things are carefully chosen, carefully designed, and have a very important role in this movie. I was invited to fly to Toronto to meet with David. They basically showed me concept work, some of the art department illustrations. They showed me Kate Hawley's awe-inspiring costume concepts. Props and costumes work together really closely. It was a great head start for me. The characters were so well developed at that point. I started to imagine designing the props right away. For instance, we were trying to come up with a concept for the Joker. What? He's a tactile person who likes to have the most cutting edge weaponry. This looks neat. The utensils that the Joker has, whether it's his handgun or his razor blade, has jewels or gold inlaid in it because he's that kind of guy. The accoutrements certainly made an impact. Those little things, I think, help build the reality. When you dive into these worlds, your imagination is just lit on fire. <laughs> Come on, baby. That shot was a challenge because there was a lot of reference material to go by. There was a lot of different comic book versions of the wrist magnum. The directorial encyclical that David uh, sent down is that everything had to be real and operational. For example, Deadshot's wrist magnums, they were saw glocks that actually would fire real bullets if somebody was dumb enough to put one in there. Here we have Deadshot's wrist magnum. Deadshot's wrist magnum is based on a blank firing Glock. As he clicks this button, it's firing the magnum. It just adds a whole other element of authenticity when you don't have to go bang, bang, you know? <laughs> when you actually point it and you, you know, you feel it. Fire! It's firing and there's recoil, but it just really gives it that Fire! next level of reality. And I was standing right next to him the very first time he fired that weapon and I looked at him and he got this kind of like this little smile on his face and you could tell he really liked it and then before you know it it was David is an extremely knowledgeable gun person. He really knows his stuff. It's not a big deal to make a gun work to the layman, but to someone who knows weapons, and someone who knows props, they know that it's a very tricky thing. Here's our next evolution of carbine. This is great. Okay, we old bolt carrier group. Mm -hmm. we'll go with that. Okay. I mean, if, if you can give me this weapon, we're in good shape. Yeah, we'll take it. Everything was done and, and built to look as though it was absolutely brand new, and then we have a tremendous scenic department that would then come and make it look like he's been carrying it for three years. It's chipped and it's worn, and really, it's just exactly the way that David wants it. It's a very authentic looking weapon, considering it's a weapon that really is totally a fantasy piece. Right here, we're prototyping masks for Deadshot. We're gonna go through a variety of designs and take the best elements of each, and. Uh... Come up with a good one. There was also a lot of comic book versions of the monocle. And so we researched and we collected those. Maybe there's a way to put some red LEDs inside of here. Yeah, sure. so it's like, theoretically, it has like a ranging function and then holistic information. The hell are they? You can cut and run, I'll blow your head off. The idea of taking this group of supervillains, teaming them up with Navy SEALs, it's a great way to ground them in a familiar situation. Being the command position, it's like Rick might not be the one that is on the gun, shooting and firing at everything that's jumping out. He might be figuring out the next move and directing the forces. Hold. Now that's this whole thing. And that was something that I worked a lot with Kevin Vance, our military advisor. Alpha, bravo team on me. When we work with actors, each kit that we put together is very individualized and different. Unlike a lot of movies you see where 
gear is kind of universal and multi-purpose. We made it specific to the script and to the story and Dave allowed us to be really creative with that. Joel, he's in charge. He's the overall leader, so he doesn't have to carry a bunch of crap because he's telling us to carry it. So what we chose for him is a very comfortable vest. This is a great plate carrier. Holds a plate that'll stop rifle rounds. And then this right here is a Winkler knife. Based on the background that Joel's character is, this is the type of knife that he would carry, kind of a tradition within that unit. Belt-wise, Joel is wearing a high-threat concealment belt. It's basically one connected piece of Kydex all the way around. It fits really well. He's got two pistol mags, two rifle mags, and then his Glock pistol. Everyone on this movie put an unbelievable amount of work into making the most authentic, real experience as possible. This is Katana. She's got my back. She can cut all you in half with one sword stroke, just like mowing the lawn. Katana. Her soul sword traps the souls of anyone it kills. And it's been around for a long, long time. Katana Soul Taker. It was actually one of my favorite experiences of the movie, and it was a complete surprise. It's extremely authentic looking. We'd look at sort of historic references to the different emblems and insignia on that. I was so worried about hitting someone with my sword that I went through a lot of rehearsal time and a lot of practice on my sword fighting. Katana, being the samurai warrior that she is, she can do it without taking a breath. She also has this little writing on her thigh, and it says, my sword sheds blood. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, we should uh, get a drink sometime. <laughs> Boomerang, he was fun. Kevin mocked this up, and what it is is it's a first-generation throwing boomerang that right. had some damage. Maybe it's one that he threw and got damaged when it came back, and he didn't want to get rid of it, and it's something he, he filed and treated yeah, as a... I like the paracord wrap. I think he like, likes to drink beer and, and make things. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, this will get you kicked out of a bar. Mm -hmm. His boomerangs were actually quite sophisticated and smooth and shiny and quite nice before we really knew exactly how rough and tumble he was going to be. You know, they say about the crazy ones. He throws these boomerangs a lot and they get damaged. Well, he's not going to throw it away. That's not the kind of person he is. So basically what we do is we fashion two almost like hand-to-hand -hand sort of knives that are boomerang shaped that are all chipped and beat up and worn and, and have all sorts of amazing patina to them, wrap some military paracord on the handles and show those to David and he immediately loved that. Yeah, I think, I think the, the, the right space is the idea of kind of like the more tore up and beat up these things are, the better. Just real, just nasty piece of metal you don't want to get cut with. Jaggedy and sharp. And... Yeah, you can see the tetanus. Right. It's kind of dangerous. I couldn't always launch a boomerang into the crowd of people that are behind a camera on a film set, but, but we got to a few times. None of the ones we use in the film actually returned to my hand, but um, you know, they came pretty close. <laughs> Sorry, that's what they do. They could be used as a sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon as, as well as something that you know he might throw. Yeah, it was great, you know? I had these kind of two blades that were like reversed and I'm doing all this action. A craziness. Harley's bat. We finally came to the right design. We finally came to the thing that David wanted. This sort of density and weirdness is great. Okay. This starts to go feel a little tribal. You know what I mean? So I would I would keep it in the more graphic red and blue okay. space here. It'd be friendlier. It's Harley, she's kind of friendly. And I would basically take that information upstairs and we would play with that for a little bit and usually in around 24 hours. And we'd show that to David and we'd be off to the races. He would show it to Margot and she was thrilled with it. <coughs> basically, from that point on, she could not step onto the stage without having the bat. Even her stunt doubles the same way. They're just, they always have their hand on that thing. There's nothing the prop man wants more than the actor to attach themselves to something that you've built for them. So Anna, in costumes, was coming up with the language, the Harley language. Oh, that looks great. Mm. Do you like BAM? Hmm. Maybe we could do something like hi, exclamation point, or smile, or good night. 
We took the, the language and the handwriting and the style of writing from the, from the garments and expanded it onto the bat and to other props. So what you end up having is a well-flowing language throughout the entire film. It goes from costumes to the props to, to other areas and it all makes sense. Max. Out of all the guns on this job, and there were a lot of guns, mine is still my favorite. Harley's gun is sick. It's a Rhino revolver with a, a six inch barrel. It's pretty top heavy, but um, it's black with like gold embellishments, and it's so cool. And I mean, the tiny details on it that you probably won't ever see on screen, but there's love, hate on the cylinder where the bullets are. It's like love, hate, love, hate on each one, like a smiley face and evil face. So you never know what bullet you're gonna get. There's little diamonds engraved in all over it. There's HQ on it. There's just a work of art. It's so cool. Oh. Oh, relax. I like the way it looks. I like the way it all kind of it all kind of flows together, and there's cohesive looks to things. And I mean, it was it was very satisfying. As a prop guy, you know, it's a dream come true. Good, talk. Good work. You know, making this kind of film, there's there's a lot of R and D that goes into this. It's important to have the details right to honor the world of the comic book, and at the same time, to engineer these amazing objects to be able to use them on film. Something tells me a whole lot of people are about to die.